Hi everyone, and welcome to the second plenary session of ISC 2022. Uh, yesterday we had the first plenary session and today we have uh, two more speakers, Inup Kang from Samsung and Rene James from Emperor. Let me first introduce Dr. Inup Kang. Dr. Inup Kang is the Corporate President of America's Office of Samsung Electronics Device Solutions Division. He has developed to the system LSI business in Samsung Electronics Device Solution as the President and General Manager from 2017 to 2021. Before the General Manager, he led numerous R&D teams in and out of the company. From 1996 to 2009, he was a leader in cellular modem developments at Qualcomm. In 2010, he joined Samsung Electronics to lead R&D and commercialization of cellular baseband RF chipsets. Owing to his experience and insight in modem and relevant wireless communication technologies, Samsung, Samsung System LSI business has become one of the key players in the mobile industry. As a general manager of System LSI business, he strengthened Samsung's dominant position in the industry concerning system on chip, image sensor, display solution, power IC, and security solution. His significant contributions to the development of diverse innovative solutions include the industry's first commercial 5G modem, AI-enabled mobile processor, and the first 0.7 micrometer and 0.8 micrometer 108 megapixel CMOS image sensors. He is an IEEE fellow and a member of the National Academy of Engineering in Korea and was awarded the Gold Tower Order of Industrial Service Merit in 2019. Dr. Kang received bachelor and master degrees in electronics engineering from Seoul National University in 1985 and 1987, and a PhD degree in electrical engineering from UCLA in 1996. Thank you so much, Inup Kang, for giving the plenary talk today, and thanks everyone for attending. Hello, everybody. This is Inup Kang from Samsung Electronics. It is my great pleasure to be here virtually. The topic I'd like to present is the art of scaling, distributed and connected to sustain the golden age of computation. The overall presentation will go by the principle and examples. Even though we are trying to be general as much as possible, it won't be comprehensive. Instead, I hope we'll get the gist of ideas and the trend. The agenda is like this. Opening big question, introduction, general theory of evolution, evolution of a semiconductor, innovation of four factors, and I'll conclude the talk. Now, the opening question. Where are we now? For last 40 years, we enjoyed the exponential growth in the performance. However, just like in the nature, we are confronting the S-curve. That means we are getting into realm of saturation. If you look at the state-of-the-art exascale supercomputer, we are able to mimic humans' connectomes. However, the problem is that we don't know the transfer function. In other words, that supercomputer might not have real meaning. Now, popularity of smartphones and the computing power of it transform the human's behavior. Then how far this platform can go? Can it put a brain into a smartphone? That's the main theme of this presentation. Looking back, even though half of audience might not remember what that is, my career started around this time. Now, I'm around here. Very fancy and expensive, even more expensive than average laptop computer, driving modern semiconductor technologies due to excessive power consumption limitation, efficiencies, while trying to boost the performance 
for every generation. But the reality is we are in between these beautiful creatures in terms of a useful intelligence perspective. Let's set the target for near future. What about this friendly dog? Can you mimic the brain of this dog? Of course, you have to know that what I'm trying to do is abstract metric for the computation in the age of that hilltop of s -curve. Now, let's just sit back and then see what happened in seems totally different area, evolution, and then trying to get a big hint or at least justify what you are trying to do now. So what's the evolution? Or rather, multiple definition, optimization of internal parameters against external parameters. The same principle applied to every system. For example, thermodynamic system, life system, business. An easy example, us under COVID-19 pandemic, somehow we are evolved. Perhaps there are many textbook level principles, for example, variations, inheritance, but for us, let's take a dialectic view and state that quantitative changes into qualitative innovations. Again, easier example, bigger and bigger will end up with a collapse. Now let us look at a level deeper. There are two categories. One is disruptive, I call first order innovation, or incremental, second order innovation. For the disruptive one, one easy example is we evolve from vacuum tube, transistor, integrated circuit. Now, if you look at the incremental, the second order innovation, we think that it can be categorized as distributed and connected. If you look at this diagram, single cell evolve into trillions of cell and distribute it. In other words, for specialization and connect them together or distribute and connect it. Isn't that similar to what you are doing? Let's apply this general principle into our specific area. Now, the evolution of semiconductor chips, our core topics here. Our evolution, the driving thing is money, financial, profit. It's all about the business. So due to these external parameters, our internal parameters are changing to encapsulate this one into more tangible metrics, we come up with a single equation, CPR, cost performance ratio. Now, under power budget, because uh, the main topic of uh, our talk today is uh, on the mobile world, then we manipulate into four terms, hoping that these terms are not correlated. These four terms are process technology, design technology, economic factors, and then constraint, power budget constraint. Now the first one, Mr. Moore, the speed of speed up slows down. And most of the design improvement are from parallelism and sophisticated algorithms. However, if we normalize by number of transistors, the normalized architecture improvement are decreasing. Even though we don't think this is a controversial, but at least it was a discomforting 
for some of you guys. In any case, we are boldly saying that the performance speed up is mainly due to increased number of transistors. Yet another discomforting trend, inflation came earlier than recent economic instability. To squeeze the scaling, the wafer cost skyrockets. So far, we have been discussing quantitative changes. Let's shift gear to core. Let's apply our theme of distributed and connected to each term from transistor level, intra-chip, inter-chip, and inter-device. Let's one level differ in the architectural innovations. Intra-chips, based on our internal data, please note that this is area normalized, technology normalized. These graphs are showing that CPU is flat, GPU is still growing, and NPU is exponential. Here, NPU is a neural processor for AI slash ML. Now, how we are going to interpret? There are many ways to interpret this curve. For example, the aging of the technology. In other words, the position in the S curve. Or the in interface level. Some are binary comparable, function level comparable, application level comparable. Let's follow last decade in mobile application processor. We start with the bread and butter single CPU, make it bigger, and then we add the GPU, multi-core CPU, HMP, ISP, and MPU. Hmm, then what would be the next decade? Let's look at the dipole, which are drawn at the same scale. Left is 45 nanometer, right is a 4 nanometer. The cell size got shrunken 100 times. However, interesting fact is that the chip size is pretty much similar. I let you tease your brain why chip size are similar after 10 years. Let's do some case study, NPU, the neural processing unit. That is 100 times, probably 1,000 times more efficient than CPU on certain tasks, like a matrix multiplication, tensor multiplication, this picture depicts a Samsung's NPU architecture. We look at one level deeper and categorize into classification class and processing class. As you can see, if you plot by the number of parameters, number of computation, we can see clear boundaries of two different categories. Then the natural question is, how are you gonna handle these two distinctive classes. Let's look at the pictorial view on the previous categories, classification and then processing. This one, in other view, we can see as a deep architecture or a shallow architecture. One more, deep, shallow, and micro. Especially on the mobile world, there is a always on demand, very extreme, low battery consumption. So we have this one as deep, shallow, and micro evolving it. Definitely thanks to modern semiconductor fabrication technology, somewhat to battery technology, very slow or fast. Now, the third factor, economic factor, interchip optimization. People are familiar with the term 3DIC. To be more technical, the curious case of defect intolerance in the nozzle chip. 
as compared to memory die. This one is a typical convex optimization problem. The gain with less this die size versus interconnection cost. Even though this technology is not the mainstream yet in the mobile world, in the server world, the production just have started. Let's go one level deeper. There are several ways we can partition. For example, logic versus memory, inter-IP connection, or even intra-IP. You guys have fun. Finally, the rather extreme case of a mobile, the battery budget. Okay, all of us working extremely hard on device level, client level, exploring every possible means in the device only. Now, if you are computer savvy, you heard about it, server client tomorrow. Let's get back to server client tomorrow, AKA cloud computing. Of course, we have to ask ourselves that, are you sure to solve the latency problem in the server client tomorrow? The bandwidth you can solve with the brute force solution. But what about latency? If we look at this graph, it clearly shows that our great minds of 3GPP are working toward what targets in mind. See, bandwidth increasing, latency can reduce. They are trying to achieve this with fat and short pipe. Broader, wider, hotspot, 5G, millimeter wave, even further, 10 gigabps, oh my. That's the current status of a cellular wireless communication. Now, the top problem of latency has triggered of edgy computing and followed by split computing. The need for the automotive and AR slash VR could be satisfied with the existing 5 technology. Of course, you have to realize that there is no free lunch. The reduced latency can be with the increasing computing power. We have to thanks to advanced technology. Now, let's see how much 60 can reduce the latency. People are talking about 10 microseconds. Then how to use this latency in what applications? Even though I have an emphasized latency, the cell capacity, roughly the bandwidth, is directly related to financials. Government is selling the air in billions, the frequency auction, setting aside the OBEX of an operator. Thanks to computing power with an incremental cost error, we can significantly increase the cell capacity. Everything has an end, and our journey is reaching that too. No matter what, no matter who said, we have technology that the modern society has a significantly benefit by semiconductor chip shrinking. With the rest of sweat, we have enjoyed the easy ride. However, we have reached the hilltop. And then we are obligated to devise a bigger scheme. In this presentation, we have formulated a rather simple abstract equation and then sketch from intra-chip, inter-chip, and inter-device. Now, the homework is upon you with the bigger pictures in mind, how to satisfy the upcoming future need and solve it elegantly and economically. I would say that. Thanks in advance to all of you. Thank you very much.